Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Yeah, yeah. A 62 year old female presented to ER with alleged history of slip and fall mm. while trying to pluck fruit at home and complaints of right wrist swelling and pain. On initial 10 second assessment, airway was patent, no pooling of secretion, C spine was non tender, and neck movements were normal. Uh, breathing respiratory rate was 20 per minute, saturation 100 percentage in room air, air entry bilaterally equal. Circulation BP was 130 by 90 millimeters of mercury, pulse rate was 96 per minute, GCS 15 by 15. Uh, with pupils equal and reacting to light. At this time, the pain score was pain score was nine by ten. So uh, initially, we had immobilized the patient uh, hand with a splint, and then ice packs were given and IV paracetamol was given for the patient one gram. Uh, exposure febrile uh, patient, uh, prevented hypothermia, and on reassessment, the pain score was reduced only to six by ten. So we had given uh, after ruling out allergic history, Keterlac was given. Coming to history, 62 year old female who is a known case of hypertension presented to ER with alleged history of slip and fall while trying to pluck fruit at home. She fell on her right side where she tried to resist with her right upper limb and fell on an outstretched hand. No history of any head injury, loss of consciousness, vomiting, seizures, no history of any chest pain or acute onset breathlessness. She complains of pain and swelling over the right wrist and also not a deformity. She could walk and bear weight after the event and she was taken to ER. Okay. Uh, she is in on case of hypertension on tell me certain. Can you tell the local examination findings? Uh, on examination, the attitude of the limb was right limb was held by the other limb, uh, slightly supinated. And uh, coming from uh, the uh, distal uh, joint, right shoulder and right elbow range of movements were full. Uh, right forearm, there were no visible deformity or swelling and confirmed with palpation coming to right. No front. visible deformity? Uh, uh, forearm. Forearm, okay. Uh, right wrist, there is swelling and deformity. Uh, what is the deformity that you see? Uh, there is one some dorsal. Uh, what is the classical dinner, deformity? Dinner you say it is a dinner, dinner fork, fork deformity. Uh, then tenderness was present at the uh, radial stylo mm. and mild increase in temperature was there. Wrist mobility was restricted and could not assist completely due to pain. Uh, radial and ulnar pal pulse was palpable and finger movements were normal. No tenderness in the uh, scaffold was there. Okay. So which, uh, we. Uh, uh, when they had with fall on outstretched, outstretched hand. hand. Okay, so patient had a fall on outstretched hand. Sixty-three year old lady. Lady. Okay, so fine. So uh, when we they had with X-rays. Okay. Uh, X-ray of the right wrist, AP lateral, and one joint above elbow uh, and hand was taken. Uh, X-ray was showing a, a colis fracture, which is two centimeter cortico cancellous junction with okay. a, a dorsal displacement of the uh, distal fragment. What is exactly colis fracture? It is a uh, extra articular fracture, distal yes. end of radius. Uh, it is two centimeter above the um, radio uh, wrist joint, mm. uh, with a dorsal uh, displacement of the distal radius. Of fragment. the distal fragment, distal segment. fragment. And what will happen to the inferior radial nerve joint? Uh, inferior radial joint will be. There will be dislocation. So that is one more thing that we usually miss. There is an inferior radial nerve joint dislocation and a distal radius fracture, usually extra articular fracture with a dorsal tilt. So that is the classical uh, colis fracture. That is the reason why you are getting a dinner fork sort of a deformity. The fork sorting the fingers and the deformity will be uh, showing on the uh, dorsal aspects. So, what is uh, Smith's fracture? It is a volar uh, dislocation, uh, mm. displacement of the uh, distal fragment. Otherwise, we can call it as reverse no, colli fracture. Called. So, that is the two named distal radius fracture. As you rightly said, associated injury, uh, scaphoid uh, fracture, very important because fall on outstretched hand, you can have an easily a carpal bone fracture that can be missed is scaphoid fracture. So, where will you elicit for the tenderness for scaphoid fracture? In the anatomical snuff box. The anatomical snuff box. You need to look for the tenderness in the anatomical snuff box. So that is the uh, for your scaphoid fracture. So scaphoid fracture is not only have a distal radial fracture. Uh, you can name it as a colis fracture. So colis fracture as you said the deformity is everything now comes to the management in an emergency room perspective. So how will you decide okay this lady this should be the treatment. So what are the treatment option you can have a simple close reduction and uh, you can have an or closed reduction with a K wire with the help of a K wire, or you can have an open reduction and internal fixation, and then you can have an uh, plating depending upon how deformity, how the functionality of the limb is going to happen because it's right side. Mm -hmm. If she's a right-handed person, 
uh, the deform there should not be any major deficit because otherwise it will affect her day to day activity. So, by looking at these features, okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, this patient needs a reduction in internal fixation. This can be managed conservatively. So, how will you take the call? If the uh, if there are no focal neurological deficits, any vascular com compromise, uh, and the X-ray showing simple cordis fracture without any other fractures, without comminution, without any intraarticular extension, we can mm. uh, uh, close redu reduce in the ER itself. Okay. Uh, if there is uh, if fracture instability, we have to <coughs> refer to an uh, orthopedician. It may be that uh, if there are any uh, neurovascular compromise, any uh, comminuted fracture, open fracture. Uh, if there is intraarticular extension, if mm. the dorsal tilt is more than 10, 20 degrees, mm. and if the uh, displacement is uh, the radial shortening is more than 5 mm, mm. Uh, and um, comminution also. Okay, so uh, these are the things that they need and fixation. Mm. So the thing is that what we can try in our ER, maybe we can uh, try a close reduction, simple close reduction with manipulation with an adequate procedural analysis we can do. But the problem here it is what are the risk factors you should know and how frequently whether there is any chance what can happen this is the distal uh, fracture segment they can collapse because of the osteoporosis because the age is 63 and she had a significant fall and she got a colis fracture. So these are all risk factors for the colis fracture elderly age female age group. Uh, 60 plus so osteoporosis so common risk factors that you need to implicate so our idea will be what all things can be done by an emergency physician in the ER and uh, what are the important things as you said we can do a close reduction and looking at the x-ray if it is there is no intraarticular extension sometime it might be difficult to say to look for intraarticular extension that is the time when we ask for a CT. So, routinely CT is not needed, MRI never needed, but whenever you have a suspicion in your mind whether there is an intraarticular extension of the fracture, you can ask for a CT. Or otherwise, there is a gross deformity, you have very sure that this patient need an uh, internal fixation, open reduction and internal fixation. That time to understand and plan the surgery better, they may ask for a CT. Otherwise, routinely colis fracture CT is not indicated. So, when you come uh, for the reduction part, you need to plan how what are the methods by which we can do the reduction one two three four options um, pain management. pain management. how you can plan the reduction you have to do a close reduction in the ER you can either do with the help of a procedure sedation or else you can do with an hematoma block so what how will you decide okay this patient I will do with this this patient I will do with this if there are uh, multiple comorbidities and uh, um, if any risk, uh, low GCS prevent uh, aspiration risk, if the uh, procedural sedation, IV procedural sedation is contraindicated, we can try with so what, what, what will how will you say when you, we are going for a procedural sedation, this patient I will not take. So how, what is the classification? Oh, uh, yes. ASA, American Society of Anesthetists, we have a classification. So, ASA 4 and all, we will never want to do any procedure sedation. If ASA 1 and 2, but majority of the time, what we see in this group will be ASA 3. Usually, this group of patients will be ASA 3. When you look at the strategies, the comorbidities, everything, it will be ASA 3 is what we will be seeing. So, that time it is like plus or minus group of patients. So, she has hypertension and elderly age group. Maybe she will come into the category of ASA 3. So, ASA 3. Uh, what are the safest option you need to have pain reduction and you should have sedation also so which will be your agent options of choice for this age group uh, midas okay and fenda okay um, see problem midasolum and fentanyl is good option but the problem is that Pain management will be done, but when you have to have a sedative property, you really need a higher dose of an agent. So, when you consider regarding a procedural sedation, ideal will be you should have sedation with analgesia property. That will be always, it will be ketamine will be the number one agent. When you look into all these conditions, ketamine will be the number one agent, but there might be some contraindication because of hypertension. The blood pressure can go up and maybe due to high ASA grade, we will not prefer to use ketamine sometimes. So, otherwise the good option is etomidate. But the problem with etomidate is it don't have analgesic properties. So, you need to give a good opioid analgesia prior to that. So, maybe a combination of fentanyl etomidate will be an ideal situation for this patient or ketamine with propofol. 
ketamine with propofol combination is also good propofol will uh, cause some amount of hypertension that will be covered by ketamine so it will not go into that hypertension range so it is all comfort of the patient and the comfort of the uh, surgeon or the emergency physician who is going to give the procedural sedation if you ask me i would have preferred a, maybe a fentanyl with an etomidate combination maybe a small dose of uh, midazolam what is the advantage when you are using multiple drugs we are only using half the drugs so the maximum toxicity can be avoided so when you are using uh, etomidate we can use it like 0.1 to 0.2 mg per kg body weight normal induction dose is 0.3 mg per body weight so we'll use some 8 to 10 mg of etomidate maybe a 50 to 100 microgram of fentanyl maybe 1 mg of midazolam so we are not using every drug full doses little bit of half doses of every drug so we are preventing the side effect of one drug so that is the advantage when you have different different uh, groups when you are mixing that is the advantage so uh, that would be my choice but uh, different people have different choice depending upon their experience so uh, that is one thing so we can go ahead and how will you do the reduction uh, reduction will be uh, traction and counter traction should be applied mm. and then the doors initially we had to correct the dorsal tilt yes that with, uh, with, uh, with thumb or with finger we had to dorsal with the thumb it will thumb. be usually when you are doing the traction it will be the thumb, thumb that you need to give the compression and you need to reduce the dorsal tilt and then uh, a slight uh, pronation and ulnar tilt should be given and you will should be fixing it on a slab. slab all those things should be kept ready you should be keeping your 10 to 12 layers of uh, pop yes. slab and uh, the roller bandage everything should be kept ready and you can apply a slab and you can keep it in that position so that position is very important so what is the shaken position? position that is the position yeah, either glass. shaken or a holding a glass so that is a classical thing holding a glass position will be the classical representation once after the reduction and mostly you need to go ahead and do a check x-ray after the reduction whether the percentage of displacement mostly what we'll be able to do is the displacement that has happened to the dorsal has reduced at least 50 percentage reduction you can agree to it but once you have a significant uh, displacement alone definitely need uh, fixation open reduction in inner fixation so that is regarding your uh, procedural sedation what are the other option hematoma block hematoma block so can you describe the hematoma block hematoma block we can uh, de give uh, use uh, 0 0.5 percent lignocaine uh, about 20 ml of it can be taken in a syringe and uh, we have to uh, apply um, prick the area of the uh, fracture site uh, by withdrawing the uh, blood, sorry, blood. So this is one area where we wanted to see the blood Usually when we say hematoma, we wanted to go inside the hematoma. Usually when we give local anesthesia, we will say that we don't want to see the blood. But this is one area we want to go inside and we need to aspirate the blood. Then uh, and, uh, near to the fracture segment, we have to give the anesthesia. With the help of ultrasound, it is much more easier. You can uh, avoid puncturing a major blood vessel. So what is the problem with hematoma block? Uh, Toxic, systemic toxicity is a problem, so you, crash cut should be ready. Inadvertently, you can go inside a vessel and it can cause uh, lignocaine or whatever be the drug, local anesthesia toxicity. So, what will be the signs? Uh, initially, there will be perioral tinkling or numbness, mm -hmm. and then there will be uh, uh, um, tinnitus, then seizures, tachycardia. Uh, and they can go into cardiac arrest yeah. also. That is the worst scenario. And what do you need to do when you have such an event happening? Stop your infusion and, uh, and uh, give. Intralipid emulsion. Intralipid emulsion should be made available. So, when you are planning for an hematoma block or any of the in, uh, blocks that you are planning, you should be ready with your intralipid emulsion. Without that, don't try. And your crash card and intralipid emulsion should be available in your ER. 1.5 ml per kg, you have to give bolus initially followed by infusion. So, intralipid emulsion should be must available in your ED when you are planning for an hematoma block or whatever be the regional anesthesia block. Okay. So, uh, what are the other uh, complications? of a college fracture that you can anticipate uh, malunion is the most common complication uh, college always so when you discuss about malunion. complication immediate, immediate late uh, immediate complication can be any neurovascular uh, uh, compromise okay. most commonly median nerve uh, can be compressed and uh, any radial artery injury so in, uh, every time we have to palpate the uh, pulse and during reduction also every time we have to pulse, palpate the pulse and reduce each step uh, the, that is immediate. Okay. Uh, and late will be uh, always malunion. Uh, it may uh, permanent enough of deformity can happen. And then 
Pseudex osteodystrophy. Pseudex osteodystrophy. These are all uh, rare, right. but any forearm fractures you can have pseudex osteodystrophy. So this is also one of the complications. So the most problem, as you said, it will be the malunion, and uh, you should not be hesitant to refer to an orthopedician, thinking that you have got a very good reduction. That don't doesn't mean that uh, the functionality of the limb is very important. Being a right-handed person. So functionality you need to consider maybe a 63 year old, she need to do her household activities, maybe not like a major work, but household activities needed to be done. But left hand, uh, if not left hand dominant, then we have a little bit more option. So always the surgeon decides upon the x-ray findings and the functionality of the limb and how better we are able to reduce with the fracture and also osteoporosis. This all will be the consideration to take a call. Okay, this patient should be given this and what will be the uh, discharge advice for her? Um, um, rest will be should be there and then um, move the fingers frequently and after two weeks you ha they have to see a orthopedician for check x-ray and everything. Okay, most importantly you should teach her what are the signs of uh, compartment syndrome. So okay. the uh, tingling sensation and uh, any paresthesia, any numbness they should report immediately and uh, you have to avoid what is the complication that you can have Volkmann's Volkman's ischemic uh, contracture that is a cast and all when you are converting once it is slab mm -hmm. after one week you will be converting into a cast so usually we will discharge with a slab but later on we can put it to a cast call is cast we can put and later on these are the things that you should be telling them and uh, after two weeks they can decide whether a surgical fixation is needed or not maybe early itself we can plan for a discharge uh, maybe a decision on surgery but sometime what can happen initially there was a reduction and later on the displacement can still occur so that very important after more, not two weeks i will say one week it will be ideal to review back once the edema everything settles we can convert it to a cast we can uh, change that is the reason why we are always putting for ed you never see putting a cast why? Because we wanted that edema to settle. Then only a cast will be properly fitting. Always we will put slab. That is always that what we see is always we will put slabs and send the patient uh, to the house or wherever it is. Okay. So that is regarding your Cowley's fracture. So what other advice that you wanted to give? Not immediate but definitely you should be treating her osteoporosis, vitamin D deficiency, calcium supplement. Otherwise, she can come with another fracture any soon. So, maybe uh, you can quantify later on, but not during an acute fracture. But later on, we can start her on uh, bisphosphonates. Depending upon on acute fracture, we don't start. Maybe vitamin D supplementation, all those things, very, very important key things. Otherwise, she can have a trivial trauma and she can come back with another fracture. What will be the other fracture? Neck or femur fracture, any of this or vertebral fractures, collapse, anything she can come up with. So, uh, Holly's fracture, the take home message will be. Uh, it's a distal radial ulnar fracture with inferior radial ulnar joint dislocation. Radial fracture with inferior radial ulnar joint dislocation. The classical deformity, the Cowley's deformity, that what you see is the dinerfort deformity, what we say. And uh, X-ray will be apilateral, will be more than sufficient enough for the uh, confirmation of the diagnosis. And always keep in your mind, scuffered fracture can be missed. So always palpate the anatomical slip box for any tenderness because push injuries, fall on outstretched hand. Scaffold fracture, radial ulnar joint or radial fractures, elbow dislocation, shoulder fractures. So these are all very common with a fall on obstruct hand. What will be the injury in Smith fracture? It will be? It will be what type of injury? Uh, um, garden spade. It will be? Uh, what, uh, extension injury. It will be more of an extension, flexion, extension injury. So that will be the difference between Smith and uh, Coley's fracture. And uh, procedural sedation, very key how to do the pain management and uh, how to do the reduction uh, what after reduction whom needs surgery what are the different options for surgery that orthopedic condition that is not our business to uh, deal with it but uh, definitely don't hesitate to inform an orthopedician because functionality of that limb very very important key thing suppose a 40 year old male who is a welder who is who want to do definitely you should not wait like one week and all immediately he can take for surgery and very important that what within one or two weeks three weeks later he can start going for his work when the fixation is being done so that is also very very important okay and anything else that you wanted to add on that you have prepared no. that we have added okay thank you thank you